Live from Boston, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the IBM CDO Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and I'm joined by my co-host, Paul Gillen. We have two guests for this segment. We have Stephen Iluk, who is the Vice President of Deep Learning Global Chief Data Officer at, I at IBM, and Christopher Bannix, Group Chief Data Officer at ING. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. My pleasure. Before pleasure. we get started, Steve, I know you have some very important CUBE fans that you need to give a shout out to, <laughs> please. For sure, so I missed them on the last three rounds of CUBE. So I'd like to just shout out to Santiago, my son, five years old, and the shortest one, which is Elena. Uh, miss you guys tons, and now you're on the air. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got that important piece of business. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's talk about metadata. What's the problem with metadata? So, uh, I mean, you know, the, uh, the one problem or the many problems? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, many problems. Problems. how long you got? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the problem is it's, it's um, it's everywhere, and it's and there's lots of it. And bringing context to that, and an understanding it from an enterprise-wide perspective, is a huge challenge. Just connecting to it, finding it, or collecting it centrally, um, and then understanding the context and what it means. So the standardization of it, or the, the lack of standardization mm -hmm. of it across the board. Yeah, it's it's incredibly challenging. Just the immense scale of metadata. Uh, at the same time, dealing with metadata, as, as Chris mentioned, you know, just coming up with your own company's you know glossary of terms to describe your own data. It's kind of step one in in the journey of of making your data discoverable and governed, right? So it's it's challenging and it's it's not well understood. And I think we're we're very early on in these stages of of describing our data. Yeah. But we're, we're getting there, slowly but surely. Well, so, uh, uh, perhaps in that context, it, it, it's, it's not only the fact that it's, it's everywhere, but actually we've not created structural solutions in a consistent way across, it, across industries to be able to structure it and manage it in, a, in an appropriate way. So, uh, help, help people do it better. What, what are some of the best practices for creating, managing metadata? Well, you can look at, diff I mean, it's such a broad space, you can look at different worlds. Let's just take, you know, the, the work that we do around describing our data, and we do that for, um, uh, for the purposes of regulation, for the purposes of GDPR, et cetera, et cetera. It's really about discovering and providing context to the data that we have in the organization today. So, um, in that respect, it's creating a catalog and making sure that we have the descriptions and the structures of the data that we manage and use in the organization. And to give you uh, perhaps a practical example, when you have a data quality problem, um, you need to know how to fix it. Um, so, you store, so you create and structure metadata around, well, where does it come from, first of all? So what's the journey it's taken to get to the point where you've identified that there's, there's a problem? But also then, who do we go to to fix it? Where did it go wrong in the chain? And who's responsible for it? Those are very simple examples of you know, the metadata around you know, the transformations the data might have come through to get to its end point, the quality metrics associated with it, um, and then the owner or the data steward that it has to be rooted back to to get fixed. And all of those are metadata elements, All of those, right? yeah, because we're not really talking about the data. The data might be a, you know, um, a debit or a credit, something very simple like that in banking terms. Um, but actually it's got lots of other attributes associated with it which essentially describe that data. So what is it? Who owns it? What are the data quality metrics? How do I know whether it, what its quality is. So where, where do organizations make mistakes? Is it, do they create too much metadata? Do they create poor, is it poorly labeled? Is it not federated? Uh, yes. <laughs> I think it's a mix of all of them. One of the things that you know Chris alluded to, and you might have you might have understood, is that it's an incredibly labor-intensive task. There's a lot of people involved. And when you get a lot of people involved, and sadly, a, a, a quite time-consuming, slightly boring job, it, there's errors and there's problems. That's data quality, that's GDPR, that's government-owned entities, regulatory issues. Likewise, if you can't discover the data because it's labeled wrong, that's potential insight that you've now lost because that data's not discoverable to you know, a potential project that's looking for similar types of data. Right? So it's uh, kind of step one is you know, trying to describe your metadata to the organization, creating a taxonomy of, of metadata, and you know, getting everybody on board to label that data, whether it be short and long descriptions, you know, having good tools, et cetera. Yeah. yeah, I mean look, the simple thing is, we, uh, you know, and I, we struggle as, an, as, as 
as a capability in any organization, we struggle with these terms, right? Metadata, well, you know, if you're talking to the business, they have no idea what you're talking about. You've already confused them the minute you mentioned meta. <laughs> hashtag, um, it's yeah. a hashtag. Yeah, exactly. It's basically what it is. It's, yeah, it's, but it's essentially what it is, it's just data about data. It, it's, the, it's the descriptive components that tell you what it is you're dealing with. And if you just take, you know, a, a simple example from finance, a, an interest rate on its own tells you nothing. Could be, it could be the interest rate on a savings account, it could be the interest rate on a bond, but on its own, you have no clue what you're talking about. Same, you know, a maturity date or a date in general. You have to provide the context, and that is its relationships to other data in the context that it's in, but also the description of what it is you're looking at. And if that comes from two different systems in an organization, let's say one in Spain and one in France, um, and you just receive a date, you don't know what you're looking at. You have no context of what you're looking at. And simply, you have to have that context. So you have to be able to label it there and then map it to a generic standard um, that, we, that, that you implement across the organization in order to create that control that you need in order to govern your data. Are there sta standards, I'm sorry, Rebecca. Yes. Are, are there standards efforts underway, industry standard-wide yeah. efforts? Yeah, there are open metadata standards um, that, are, that are underway um, uh, and gaining a great deal of traction. Um, and there are, and internally, you st you have to standardise anyway, I irrespective of what's happening across mm -hmm. the industry. Yeah. You don't have the time to wait for external standards to exist in order to make sure you standardise internally. Another difficult point is it can be region or country specific, yeah. right? So uh, it makes it incredibly challenging because every region you might, you know work in, you might have to have a, an own sub glossary of terms for that specific region, and you might have to control the export of certain data with certain terms between regions and between countries. It gets very, very challenging. Yeah, and then somehow you have to connect to it all to be able to see what it all is, because you, you, you know, the, the usefulness of this is, you know, if, if one system calls exactly the same, maps to, let's say, date, and its local definition of that is, you know, uh, maturity date, whereas someone else's map date to birth date, you know you've got a problem, <laughs> yeah? You just know you've got a problem. And, and it, 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 exposing the problem is part of the process, you know? It, understanding, hey, that mapping's wrong, guys. Yeah? Okay. So where do you begin? If, you, if your mission is to transform your organization to be one that is data-centric, and the business side is sort of gla eyes glazing over at the mention of metadata, mm. uh, where, where, what kind of communication needs to happen? What kind of... Uh, Teamwork, collaboration? Yeah. So, I mean, teamwork and collaboration are, are absolutely key. The communication takes time. Yeah, don't expect one, you know, um, uh, blast of communication to solve the problem. It, it's going to take education and working with people um, to actually get them to realize the importance of things. And to do that, you need to start something. Mm -hmm. um, just the communication and the theory doesn't work. Uh, it, no one can ever connect to it. You have to have people who are working on the data for a reason that is business critical. Uh, and you need to have them experience the problem to recognize that metadata is important. And until they experience the problem, you don't get the right amount of traction. Um, so you have to start small and grow. Yeah, and, and you can use potentially the WIP as well. Yeah. Governance or regulatory requirements, that's, an, uh, that's a nice one to push things yeah. along. <laughs> yeah. That's often helpful. Yeah, yeah. It, it's helpful. But, but not necessarily um, popular. No, um, no. And uh, yeah. so you have to get that, you know, we're always balance. struggling with that balance. You know, um, th th there's a lot of regulation that drives the need for this, but equally, that same regulation I essentially drives all of the same needs that you need for, for, um, for analytics, um, for good measurement of the data, for growth of customers, um, for delivering better services to customers. All of these things are important. You know, just the, you know, the web click information you have, that's all you know, essentially metadata. The way we interact with our clients online and through mobile, that's all metadata. So it's not all, you know, whip or stick, um, there's some real value that, yeah. that, that is in there well, as well. well these would seem to be a, a domain that is, that is ideal for automation, that uh, through mm -hmm. machine learning, contextualization, machines should be able to figure a lot of this stuff out. Uh, yeah, wrong? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely right. And I think there's, um, you know, we're, we're working on proof of concepts to prove that case, and we have I IBM AMG as well, the automatic metadata generation capability using machine learning and, and AI to be able to start to auto-generate some of this insight by using existing catalogs, et cetera, et cetera, and we're starting to see real value um, through through that. It's still very early days, but yeah. I, you know, I think we're really starting to see that um, one of the solutions can be 
um, machine learning and AI, for mm -hmm. sure. I think there's, yeah, various degrees of automation that will come in waves, you know, for the next, like, immediately right now we have certain degrees where uh, we have a very small term set that, you know, is very high confidence predictions, but then you want to get specific, specific to the specificity of a company which have, you know, 30,000 terms sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, internally we have 6,000 terms at IBM, and that level of specificity to have complete automation, we're not there yet. But it's coming, and uh, it's attractive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it takes time, because, you know, you're, you're, the machine is learning, and you have to give the machine enough inputs and gradually take time, and humans are involved as well. It's not about just throwing the machine at something and letting it churn. You have to have that, that human involvement. So it takes time to have the machine continue to learn and grow and give it more terms and give it more context. Mm -hmm. um, but over time, I think we're going to see good results. I want to ask about that, that human in the loop, as mm -hmm. IBM so, yeah. so often calls it. I mean, I, one of the things that Inder Paul Bandari was talking about is how the CDO needs to be a change agent in chief. Yeah. So how are the rank and file interpreting this, this move to automation and, the, and, and um, increase in machine learning in their organizations? I mean, is it, is it accepted? Is, is, it a, <laughs> is it a source of paranoia and worry? I mean, I, what? I think it's a mix. I think we're kind of blessed, at least in, in the CDO at IBM, the global CDO, is that everyone's kind of on board for that mission. Yeah. That's what we're doing. <laughs> right, right. But it, I think every like uh, there's team members 25, 30 years on on IBM's roster, and you know they're just as excited as I am, and I've only been there for you know 16 months. But it kind of depends on the project too. Like ones that have a high impact, it's like everyone's really gung ho because you know we've seen process times go from 90 days, you know, down to a couple days. You know, that's a huge reduction. You know, and that's the governance, regulatory aspects. But more for us, it's a little bit about you know, we're looking for the linkage and availability of data so that we can get more insights from that data. You know, and better outcomes for different types of enterprise use cases. And a more satisfying work day. Yeah, yeah it's fun. No, it and that's fun that's stuff. a key point. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, much better to be involved in this than doing the job itself, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the job of tagging and, and creating metadata associated with the, the a vast number of data elements is yeah, very hard work, it's very difficult. And it's much better to be working with machine learning to do it and, and dealing with the uh, you know the outliers or the exceptions mm -hmm. um, than it is you know chugging through. I mean, realistically, it just doesn't scale. Uh, you you can't do this across thirty thousand elements in any meaningful or or way or a way that really makes sense from a financial perspective. So you really do need to be able to scale this quickly, and machine learning is the way to do it. Have you found a way to make uh, to make data governance fun? Can you can you? Are you suggesting gamify that data it? governance is <laughs> fun? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, can you yeah. gamify it? Can you? Uh, yeah, can I mean, you well, we, we haven't found a gamification. I mean, we found gamification. We, we're using gamification in very in many ways. We haven't been using it um, in in terms of data governance yet. But look, uh, you know, governance is just a horrible word, right? Uh, you know, people have really negative connotations associated with it. But actually, if you just step one degree away, we're talking about quality, mm -hmm. right? And uh, quality means better decisions. And that's actually all governance is. Governance is knowing where your data is, knowing who's responsible for fixing if it goes wrong, and being able to measure whether it's right or wrong in the first place. And it being better means we make better decisions, our customers have better engagement with us, we please our customers more, and therefore they hopefully engage with us more and buy more services. Um, so, you know, I, I think we should, the, your governance I think is something, you know, we invented through um, you know, through the need for regulation and the need for control and from that background, but realistically, it's just guys, we should be proud about mm -hmm. the data that we use in the organization and we should want the best results from it. And it, it's not about governance, it's about us being proud of, about what we do. Yeah, a great note to end on. Thank yeah. you so much, Christopher and Stephen. Thank you so you. much. Cheers. I'm Rebecca Knight for Paul Gillen. We will have more from the IBM CDO Summit here in Boston coming up just after this.